Uh, good morning, guys. I want to welcome you back to the mill. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our channel, Bearded Lumber. Matthew and I, I just want to tell you we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we got something a little different on the mill here today. Uh, here in western North Carolina, where I'm at, we got walnut, but I don't get to saw a lot of it. Uh, people are a little unrealistic on the price of it, but I had some delivered uh, a while back for a customer. And we're gonna we're gonna chop it up today. Now what I got laying on the mill is a 13 foot log. Now the customer wants eight six. This same customer that's making hardwood flooring. He's gonna make hardwood flooring out of four, six, eight, and ten inch wide boards. He's wanting to get as wide as we can on this stuff because of the demand and the value of it. Also, since the log is 13 foot, he asked if we could just do eight six and then you know, like four foot four or whatever, four foot six, and he could use the short pieces. And uh, we, if you ever saw it on a wood miser, you know you doing a four foot log is just not feasible. It, the mill's not set up for it. It's, it's, it accommodates an eight foot log and bigger without any problem. So what we're gonna do, a little trick here, we're gonna saw this log at 13 feet. And uh, we'll saw it and edge it, get it squared, Put it on the stack and then we're going to cut them to eight foot six and then we'll have a four foot leftover piece and we've got about 10 logs or so to do we'll save all those four foot pieces and we'll make a four foot stack to go in the kiln when we get around the kiln right so let's look at this log it for walnut in the southeast this is kind of kind of typical this is up the tree a little bit there's a cross knot here uh, or it double trunked pretty good down through the middle there's a little knot come off here limb and then we got this limb here if you can look down the log <clears throat> i've got it laid with the the trunk where it split laid flat and i got this knot standing up uh, the reason that knot is standing up is i'm gonna go ahead and take it off because i want to make my first cut at 90 degrees from where i'm currently sitting but when I turn it up, this knot will hit the side of the mill as it comes through. So we're gonna start by taking it off. We're gonna rotate this log up 90 degrees where it's currently sitting. And then this knot here, I'm gonna take one inch slabs off of it until I get down to the trunk because these are beautiful pieces for a, a cousin of mine. His wife does craft work and she just loves this kind of stuff. I'll charge her a thing for it. I give it to her. I, I love making her happy. Just give her some, some wood that uh, I know she'll use. She'll make crafts out of it. Stuff, most of the stuff she makes, she gives away. So I, I think it's a wonderful thing. So I just want to thank you for watching and uh, let's get to making some sawdust.
can now see that we got this knot turned up. I'm going to go through and uh, we'll try to take some one inch matches off here on the diagonal intentionally to try to get some beautiful green wood. I don't see that. Let me say that I use guys for everybody, guys and gals, we appreciate you watching. But, uh, we just got this opened up. There's still a little bit of white wood in here, but we'll get through it shortly and be down into all the black. But the log does have some, some pretty grain to it. It's been dead for a while, but it's still green. So anyway, let's turn it over and make some more cuts. Here just a minute now I've, I've cut this log down to it's currently 11 and a half inches here i'm trying to get a 10 inch space but i've left a, an inch and a half down here i'm gonna roll it over and probably take a half inch clear cut and then a one inch board and i'll be at 10. this will be my face cut we're looking to see what we see we're looking for uh floor grade you know so far it looks good until you get to right here, we found some some rot. But you got to remember, I'm going to be cutting this log coming across this way. So we'll get good 10 inch wide boards to get here, and then they may end up being 6 or 8 inch wide boards. Beautiful color. It's like typical walnut. It's going to be a little green when it's wet, but it will dry black. That's what he wants. These will be all 10. Yeah, Matthew makes a good point. We cut 8 foot 6 from here back that's a good 10 board and then this four foot section where the rot's at we can cut into narrower pieces but anyway i know on camera the the wall is going to look a little green but that's typical 
I don't know if you can see the green bands in it, but as the moisture evacuates, it will turn, it will turn jet black. So, okay, let me roll it over. We'll get this uh, last space cut off of it here, and then we'll roll it all the way over. And we'll be working on the, the other side. So, let's make some sawdust, guys. Okay, I'm bringing the meal down this end because uh, I'm going to change the blade. Not happy with the cut. Let me check the temperature of it. Eh, it's not bad. It's, it's not even as warm as my hand, but I'm not satisfied with the cut quality. I don't know if you can see it. It's struggling a little bit. One, it's not hard. Knots could be a little difficult, but... As hardwoods go, it's it's not very difficult. But it's beautiful grain right here in the end of it. Not always good stable grain. It may dry and hold together and it may dry and crack apart. But we're gonna slap a new blade on here. Uh makes everything in life work better. Sawmill. Check our drive, but this is our driven belt, our drive belt, excuse me. Try to make sure it's good and clean. It's not a whole lot on there, but I like it to be clean when I go back, set tension on it. As far as the hours, everybody's different. Uh, I used to not get that many hours out of it. A belt, maybe 50, 50 hours or so, and I changed the belt. And uh, come to find out, most of that was because we weren't using a strain gauge and we were running way too much tension on our bands. Now that I'm running appropriate tension, these seem to be 150, 200 hours, maybe more for a wear them out. Hey, Matthew's got us a new blade. Uh, can you see it here? There, I got it right here. Got a little complaint with Woodmiser. I don't know if you can read it. Get the camera turned off. Hard to see. They laser engrave Woodmiser. They used to say Turbo 7. They changed it over to de decimal equivalent. Gosh, it's hard to see. I don't know if it'll focus, but instead of saying Turbo 7, it says 32 millimeter by 1.4 millimeter 0739. And uh, I mean, Woodbizer, they, they and I had a very uh, heated disagreement about this. I was like, well, they made it in America. I said, well, why didn't you change, leave it Turbo 7? Or why didn't you put it on your website or send me an email? I'm a subscriber. And tell me that we're switching from American Woodbizer Turbo 7s to the, dec the metric decimal equivalent. 
and I don't have to go through all this hassle asking you, what what'd you send me? I don't run these. But uh, I don't know, they didn't listen, but I, I got my point across anyway. So if you see them show up in your box, you'll know what they are. Your laser engraving, it just seems like to me you could have put the decimal equipment and still put Turbo 7 on it for us people that are not metric and never plan on being metric. Okay, we've got a new Turbo 7. That is a new blade. That come from uh, Joe Whitley over at uh, Woodmiser in Carolinas. If you need any blades or reshark, give them a call. They'll take care of you. They've always taken good care of me. And... Uh, I will say Joe Joe owns and runs a wood miser. And he's helped me out in the past where I've called complaining about something wouldn't work. And he'd just tell me, hey, dummy, try it this way. And uh, you know, he's older than I am. He's got more experience. And yes, sir, I'll try it. And he's normally right. So, Okay, let's finish this breaking, breaking it down. I'm, uh, see where we're sitting at here. That's it. That's at five and a sixteenth. I left just a little bit because at five inches I'm gonna roll this log over and I'll use that last sixteenth as a clearing pass and then we'll cut it all the way to the bottom. Hang on, it's gonna get loud again. Beautiful grain. This will be gorgeous once it turns black. There'll be a little issue here for the flooring guy. He may have to cut out around it as well as getting just a little bit here. We're going to take another cut and see if it go away. But all in all, that's good. If you can see, there's some little striations in the cut. Some of that can be uh, what we call speed chatter. Maybe going just a little bit too slow, but I really don't want to go any faster because I keep hitting these hard knots. But I mean, I can't even feel it. I can just barely see it. This board's 15 sixteenths to one inch thick and he's taking them down to three quarter. So that little bit of speed chatter is perfectly acceptable. Uh, don't want any more than that, but I mean, that that's perfectly acceptable. These, these boards are not meant to be used raw. They have to be kiln dried, you know, plain, run through a molder, tongue and groove. So that, that is very good. Now let's turn this log over, take another little clearing cut, cut it to the bottom, be done with it. Good. 
Okay, let's look at these last five. As we talked about earlier, these knots come into play. You know, that's too too wide to use, but we'll get eight foot six, and then we'll make a four foot board and run it through the edges, narrow it down. That, the next one's good. The one under it's good. So we ended up three full tens, and we're at two we'll have to shorten up. Guys, I hope this is helping. I've had a lot of people Ask for a little more detail what we're doing, what I'm thinking. Uh, trying to trying to share the thoughts of why I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm trying to achieve out of these cuts. But uh, we got about eight or ten more of these to go. I'm not going to bore you with them. Uh, Matthew's over here cutting and grading, picking out which end to make an eight six out of, it, which end to make short. But uh, we'll come back to the end and show you what we got out of these. Thanks, guys. We're back. We just finished up. Time lapse run through all those logs. We appreciate you staying tuned in. If you see behind me, the stacks are stickered and they're banded. We ended up getting a stack of eight foot sixes, six foot six, and a stack of four foot six. Uh, the customer came by and was tickled to death with it. Didn't mind the short pieces. The logs worked. Logs weren't cut all eight foot six. Some of them were 12, some of them were 13, almost 14. So we corrected it. Ended up with 490 board feet. Uh, we just want to tell you, we really appreciate you watching. If you would, take the opportunity to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you back at the mill.